Hey team, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will multiply a matrix by a scalar value. I will show you three examples using the numpy library function, multiply. I will also show you a trick on how to clear the screen. Well, not a trick, but a workaround to clear the screen. And then we will write a small program in Python that performs the scalar multiplication function. I hope you find this video useful. Let's begin. Click on Hey Team to activate video chapters so you can skip around this video. All of the source code for this video is available at my GitHub address. As you can see, the four is the scalar and the matrix is two rows of three columns. Step one, four times negative three equals negative 12. 4 times 5 equals 20. 4 times 6, 24. 4 times 1 equals 4. 4 times 7, 28. 4 times 8, 32. You now know how to add a scalar with a matrix. Congrats, you did it. Let's take a look at example one. On line one, import numpy as np. On line three, notice we have a function called print header. It has two parameters, title and width. The title will be centered among the width of asterisks. Notice that we have pipe symbols on the boundaries. Line nine, we're declaring a variable scalar assigning it six. Remember, a scalar variable is simply a single real number. On line 12, 13, 14, notice we're going to declare a matrix A and we're going to initialize it with 4, 8, and 12. Line 18 calls the function on line 3 and then 21, we're doing our first numpy multiply. Notice my first parameter, scalar, second parameter, the array we created on line 13. The results will be then assigned to R. Notice I print R on line 25. On line 30, notice I'm calling multiply again, but this time I'm swapping the parameters. Notice here, scalar A, now I'm seeing A scalar. Let's run this program and check out the output. So you can notice here, here is A, here's our scalar, here is our multiplication. Notice the multiplication, regardless of the order of parameters, the values are the same. That's example one. In our second example, line one, let's import numpy as mp. We still have our function print header. This time I'm gonna assign four to scalar. On line 13, the matrix A now is a two by three matrix. Remember, it always goes R, C, row, comma, column. Two rows, three column. Notice I'm saying the data type equals integer. I'm gonna print the header and then I'm gonna call it multiply a comma scalar. So the array first and then the scalar variable. I will then print out R. I will then switch up the scalar and A and now I will go scalar comma A. Notice the results will come back to R2 and then we'll print that out. Let's go ahead and run this and notice the output negative 12, 20, 24, negative 12, 20, 24, 4, 28, 32, same values. In our final numpy example, notice I have an array. I used a one by three. The default type is float. Then my scalar variable, look, I'm using a fraction. Then we're gonna assign R equal multiply A. A is our matrix, scalar is our one divided by four or 0.25. We get the value back, I print it, and then I assign it and watch here. You got A scalar, let's swap these and I think you know that now. Let's also put a header down here to separate these. Let's look at one other thing. Notice our screen is a little dirty. I can clean that up by hitting Control J, hit Enter, get you back to a prompt. Now I come and run the program and notice one, two, three, one, two, three. There you have it. And here is the function that is going to mimic multiply from numpy. Might not be identical, but it's my implementation. Notice I'm going to say from array import star and then from typing, you know, for data types, import list. Then we're going to declare a function called multiply. 
it has two parameters. The first one is s. That s is the scalar variable. And notice this only takes in an integer. And notice then we're going to send it in a, which is also a list of integers, kind of like an array of integers, a matrix of integers. And it has a return value. Notice it is a list of integers. Now it's important to remember that a matrix is an R by C, row times column. For instance, this example down here has three rows and three columns. We would call that a three by three. So I'm going to go out and get the length of A. A tells me how many rows it has. Then using A sub zero, I'm going to go get the length of the matrix at sub zero. That gives me the number of calls. Then I'm going to build a new matrix using this fancy statement right here. Now, notice I used underscore here's because they have no practicality in this. So in the for in statement is a common convention for indicating that the loop variable is not used. It is a way to indicate that the looping variable is being used only for the side effect of the loop. For example, for indexing and not for any other purpose. So here we're not using like a R or a C. It's just we're trying to build a new matrix. Now using this new matrix, notice I'm doing four R in range of rows, the number of rows, which will be three, four C in range of calls, which will be three. I'm gonna say S, the scalar, times A sub R C, and I'm gonna put that in matrix. When I'm done looping over that three by three, matrix will be populated, and guess what? I'm gonna return that. So down here in our program, we say A equals the array three by three, and then I'm gonna say R is the return value of a method called multiply, and I'm gonna send in five and A. Now notice five will map to the scalar, and A will map to the list. Then we print A, and then we will print R. Let's run this and see what happens. Notice our original list, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm going to try to mu multiply each element by five. Five times one, five, five, two, 10, five, three, 15. You see it, we were able to solve this problem. I'm hoping that you learned something. And there you have it team, the multiply function in Python. And there you have it team, scalar times a matrix. We did it in several steps. You learned how to do it by hand. Then we saw three examples using MumFi, and then we wrote our own. If you have any questions or comments about this video, please leave them below in the comment section. Until my next video, take care.